Hi handsome and welcome to my 38th video. This is more of a public service announcement for those of you who are still grinding Elvia Orcs because you believe that it's the best silver per hour. And I'm just here to tell you that that might not be the case anymore. Now I already know what you are going to say. Alunai, didn't you make a video on efficiency recently? Why are you of all people telling us where to go grind? And yeah, I did do that, and you should check it out by the way. But I think that it's also important to give the best kind of information to the people who want it. Because whether I like it or not, the idea of making the most of your time does exist, and efficiency will continue to be here for time to come. By saying that, I also preface the rest of this video by saying that if you grant Elvia Orcs simply because you like the spot, or you don't really care that much, then this video is probably not for you. However, if you don't like Elvia Orcs or are simply looking for other options that are just as good, if not better, in terms of money per hour, then this is absolutely the video for you. Before I can get into it, we need to address the elephant in the room. The silver that Garmon.com tells you Elvia Orcs earns is kind of fake. This is for two reasons, but the main one is that you will need to jump through some hoops in order to get the actual money that the site tells you. This is obviously because of the cups and the, the fact that you will need to go grind some other place on top of orcs in order to make them. And depending on your server, or perhaps on how charitable you want to be, you might also want to not include the Heart of Arid Forest, which is the other cup item that you use for the Cup of Arid Midnight, because it is also one of the items that sits constantly min listed with a lot of stock and might just be impossible to sell. Just in case, I got the numbers for both, including and not including the Heart of the Arid Forest, but as you can see, the money isn't that great on its own once you remove the cups. Now, even if you want to go grind for the cups in the other Elvia zones, we still have a problem with the cup prices. I obviously don't have a crystal ball and can't tell you the future, but I think that it is safe to assume that since the introduction of the Garazad accessories that removed the need for cups on the side grid accessories and therefore removed the amount of cups needed in general, while also requiring only one of the two previous cups to be made, we will never see the basic cups reach the previous price of around 4 billion up to max price. This is obviously not helped by the recent cup event, which had a way more immediate effect on the cup prices as well. This leads me to my second talking point as to how Garmov.com is lying to you about the silver per hour that you make, not just at Orcs, but at every Elvia Serendia grand spot, and it is that the value of the shards that you see on Garo.com is for whatever reason static and it does not update with the current prices on the center market. Here is the price of every cup on the four major servers, at least I would say that these are the four major servers, and since the value of a single shard should be a little bit under half a percent of the total price, since you do need a couple other materials to make the cup, here are the actual prices per shard provided that you create the most expensive cup possible on a given server. And if you are still wondering, here are the differences for the EU server on Garmov.com using the default and the adjusted prices for shards, if you are determined to still sell the cups. However, this still doesn't tell the full story, because if you do want to sell the cups, you're going to have to go to the other grand spots to get the other shards. Now, you might have some of the purple jewels from the cup event still running around, in which case this is not much of an issue, but for anyone who doesn't have them, you are going to have to go to grind them the old fashioned way. Here is a table showing you how many shards on average you are going to get at orcs together with the other Elvia spots needed to complete a single cup. And here is the average amount of hours you are going to need to spend at a given spot for it. Using this data, I can get you the average amount of silver per hour that you will get using the different combinations of Elvia grind spots to be able to sell the cups. Keep in mind that this number is raw silver that is not taking it into account the cup prices. If you were to add the cup prices on top of the silver per hour, it would look something like this. Here I only did the fastest and the best combinations, once again based on the EU market. So now that we know how much money per hour you are actually making at orcs, we can compare that to the money per hour at other spots around the same gear score. Before I start listing the alternatives and better spots however, I do need to address two more things. First, there are certain items in the other spot that I would consider to be unsellable, or generally things that fall under the same category and to the same pitfalls as the Elvia cups, namely anything that has to do with the infinite potion. Therefore, none of those spots will be featured in this video. Second, I already know that some people watching this are going to say something along the lines of Garamov is not accurate because anyone can just put whatever numbers they want into there, or 
I get way more trash at orcs, the numbers are bad, I actually make more money at orcs, etc, etc, etc. To which I have two things to say. First, although Garmov is not accurate, as I have also proven in this video by the way, it is disingenuous to say that its inaccuracies make your data more accurate. Until Pearl Abyss give us a first party grind tracker that has actual in-game data, Garmov is simply the best source that we have just by the fact that it has a much larger database to pull from than any other tracker that you can come up with. Just because you do better at orcs, that doesn't mean that everyone will do better at orcs. Second, if we ignore the previous point and run with the logic that Garmov is not accurate and you pull more at orcs, the same logic would then also dictate that you would pull more at the other alternative spots that I'm going to talk about, making this entire argument completely mute. As an example, Garmov says that Akman is a 700 million per hour spot, but I make around 900 million silver per hour because I play one of the best classes for the spot and I have better gear than what is required for the spot as well. This doesn't magically make Akman a 900 million silver per hour spot, however. It just means that I make more silver per hour than is average. Using Garmov data simply makes this comparison the most fair and consistent, which is why I am going to be using it. The only caveat that I will add is that I am comparing stats on the EU server specifically, so your actual number differences might be different based on the server that you play on. This is done purely for the sake of brevity, but I encourage you to do your own research if you play on other servers besides EU. That's all the disclaimers out of the way, let's get going. I think I will start with the most interesting spot, which the more observant of you may have already noticed. Swamp Fogans. This one seems to be quite specific to EU servers, because the prices of the river necklace have skyrocketed here to almost distal levels, if not more at this point. The best thing though about this spot is that you can actually combine it with orcs to make the cups, if you so choose, hitting two birds with one stone. The only con that I can see here is that outside the EU server, orcs are still better money purely on a silver per hour basis though. One zone that has historically been compared to orcs is Sikraya Lower. I don't think I need to say that much more here since most people probably knew that this one was coming. There are only two cons here. One is getting to the spot itself since it's in the middle of the ocean, so you might need a ship, but that should not be that much of a problem now. The bigger problem here is that you might want to get the value pack since most of the silver here is made by selling the items on the center market. There are obviously ways to get around this issue, but if you don't have the value pack and don't want the silver immediately, this one might not be for you. Speaking of spots that are hard to get to, let's showcase some agri spots as well. Namely, we have the aforementioned Akman Temple. This spot is very chill, it's lower gear requirement than orcs, and it pays better as well, or, or at least comparably, based on your gear of course. The inconvenience of getting here remains a con, although it's not that much of an issue nowadays since they add the entrance to it, and also the aggress itself, which will limit how much you can grind here. And you might also consider getting some mates, although the vendor is pretty close to the main rotation and because the trash is only 0.1 kilo or, or whatever measuring unit they use in the land of the black desert, you won't need to go visit him that often, so it's not that much of a con either. Going along this line of aggressive spots that need less gear than orcs, we have our old friend Centaurs. Now this spot is somehow still comparable money, especially if you don't sell the cups, but only if you have specific classes, which remains the biggest issue of the spot. Slow and immobile classes will not do that well here, so if someone told you that Centaurs is like 700-800 million hour, it's probably because they are playing one of the best classes for the spot. Final agri spot I have on this list is Jade Forest. Now, this spot will require a little bit more gear than orcs, but if you already have that, you are looking at almost double the amount of silver that you can get at orcs, as long as you got Akris active. That being said, Jade is an extremely Akris hungry spot to the point where I don't understand how it's considered an Akris efficient one by the game, but even without Akris, it is still a really good choice to grind right now, especially if you get lucky and you get the iridescent lightstones which is very expensive now thanks to all the new AFK fishers in the game, or if you get extremely lucky and you get the flame itself, which, at least on EU, is max priced at 2 billion silver. We are going to follow the trend of spots that require more gear and return once again to Eldia, but this time to Calpheon. I was surprised by this one myself and I didn't truly really buy it, but according to Garmov, Rutums are actually better silver than Orcs by a decent amount. 
by my own research and just looking into it a little bit more, I think that this is only the case if you get lucky and you get the Disto Earring drop from the boss. Otherwise, it's actually slightly less than Orcs, despite requiring more gear. But if you have that gear and if you just want to change your pace from Orcs, this might still be a decent alternative. Just be warned that it's not actually going to be that much better and I would not recommend this as much as the other spots. Similarly, and this should come as no surprise, Giants are also much better money than Orcs, but they are also the zone with the highest gear requirements on this entire list. I have still decided to include them, mostly because they have the same total AP cap as Orcs, and they are one of the more popular spots in the entire game, and they also get compared to Orcs a lot as well. So, again, if you have the gear to go to Giants, you are better off going to Giants. But again, this should come as no surprise. Which leaves me with one spot in the game that, at least on paper, blows every other spot in this category out of the water and even competes with spots that are much more gear intensive to grind at. I am of course talking about Honglin Base, one of the two newly added spots to the game in the Land of the Morning Light. This spot is very chill to grind at and it even has a similar mechanic to Israel Highlands where it grinds the spot for you for some time. But I would be fair here and say that the money per hour that you might see on Garmov is once again a little inflated. This is mostly because of the faint origins of Dark Hunger, which are currently sitting minlisted on the center market, at least on the EU server, and will most likely continue to do so for the foreseeable future, especially considering the changes on the global labs that aim to add the original origin of Dark Hunger to the newly revamped Dark Seekers Retreat. However, even if we remove these origins from the equation, we are still looking at very respectable silver per hour, especially in this category and gear requirements, and once again we have the luck element that orcs are lacking with the bone crystals that can add almost a billion silver on top of your regular hour. With how popular the spot is as well, I don't know how long this will be as profitable as it is, since a lot of its silver comes from new crystals that can be made into the essences to upgrade the Karazad accessories, but at least as it stands, I think it's fair to say that this might actually be the quote-unquote new orcs. So there you have it, a small math lesson with Lunai, the king of efficiency. I hope this video was helpful and maybe even managed to debunk some myths and misconceptions that surround the Elvia orcs grind spot. Once again, this video wasn't made to tell you that you shouldn't be grinding orcs, especially if you like the zone, the main purpose was to provide alternatives that might sometimes even be a little better than the status quo. With that being said, remember to like and subscribe, do tell me if I missed some other spots that are hidden OP or that I'm completely wrong in everything I said in the video, and enjoy your grind.